Okay class, starting on example two, we have to decide whether each table or graph represents a linear function. We have y equals mx plus b, or an exponential function, which is y equals a times b to the x, or neither, and we have to explain. Okay, first of all, we look at this first uh, table here, and we look at our x values. We notice that our x values are increasing by positive one. So, so far we know that that speaks to the exponential function. Now we go to our h of x. To go from 360 to 180, that will be multiplied by one half. And then from 180 to 90, that will be multiplied by one half. And 90 to 45 is the same thing. And 45 to 22.5 is still multiplied by 1 half. So we have our consistent y, which we know h of x actually represents y. And so now we can say that this is exponential, an exponential function. And that is because that it's multiplied. Well, our exponential equation is y equals 360, we have our y-intercept, so our a is 360, and we're multiplying by a half, and our exponent will be x. And then, well, we, next thing that we have here is that, that the y, the y values are all multiplied by a half, and this is our answer. Now, we go here. We have the same thing we have for the first x value. They're all increasing by positive one. But when we go over here to our y value or our i to the x, this is what we have here. We have 38 to 32. Now, and then we go from 32 to 28. Now, so far this went down six, this went down four, this is going to go down eight, and then finally this will go down six. There's no pattern here. So this is neither. And also, y is not consistent. So, now we go to the third one. We go from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and 30 to 40. All of these are increasing by positive 10. So we know that this is not an exponential function. Now what we want to see is whether or not this is linear or neither. Now we look here. To go from 7 to 14 is 7, a plus 7. To go from 14 to 21 is another plus 7. To go from 21 to 28 is a plus 7. And to go from 28 to 35 is another plus 7. So this is consistent. So this is linear. And we will have the form y equals mx plus b. And our final answer would be y is equal to, we will have 7x plus 7. Now, if we go here, we go to this last chart. We, have, we go from 0 to 5, that increased by 5. From 5 to 15, that increased by 10. From 15 to 20, that increased by 5. And from 20 to 30, it increased by 10. Now we go to this, uh, the k to the x, which is actually our y. From 7 to 21 is multiplied by 3. 21 to 63 is multiplied by 3. 63 to 189 is multiplied by 3. And 189 to 567 is multiplied by 3. But this is also neither. And the reason being is, even with a linear function and an exponential function, your x and y must be consistent. And in this problem, your x is not consistent. So x is not consistent. So this is the final answer for this chart here. Now we go to example three. It says input output pairs of exponential functions are listed in the table. Complete the table and find the equations for each function. Okay, so now we have our x. 
we had negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We have our y, which was listed as h of x. We have 2. And then it goes to, I fill in these uh, blanks here. We have 6, 8, 18, 54, and 162. If you notice, this is all multiplied by 3. Okay, so we will have y is equal to a times b to the x. y is equal to, or we could put, instead of y is equal to, we'll put h of x, because this is listed as h of x. h of x is equal to, now we look here at our y-intercept. This h of x here is our a, which is 18. And the number we're multiplying by is 3, so that will be our b and our x will be the exponent. So this is our final answer. Now we come here, the same chart. We have another chart here. We notice our x's are consistent. They're increasing by positive one. And we look here, from 729, we will include the values 243, 81, and 27. If you notice here, from 729 to 243, it's actually divided by three or we could write that as multiplied by one third. So from 243 to 81, we'll say multiplied by one third. 81 to 27 is multiplied by one third. And 27 to nine is multiplied by one third. So we will have K of X is equal to, now our Y intercept should be 81. That would be our A. Our B is what we're multiplying by, which is one-third, and our exponent is X. And that is our final answer. Now, we scroll down here to the next page. It says, question, what happens to the graph if a function is multiplied by negative one? Now, if you look here at these values here, these values were provided for you, and also this graph is provided for you in your notes. Now, this is the original problem. And then when we scroll down here, this is the problem if your y value is multiplied by a negative one or your base is multiplied by a negative one. So your base here is a positive two to the x or a positive two and your base here is negative two. Now, aside from noticing that your y values are different and if you notice, I added in the x spot here for a negative 16. And I also added that up here. Well, actually, I was supposed to add that, and I didn't add it. So this would be 4, and this would be 16. Now, of course, you notice that this was 3 and 8. So this is 4, and this is 16. Now, we scroll down here to these values here. Now, so now we graph these points. If you look at both of these graphs, after these points have been graphed, you need to graph these points yourself. And when you look at both of these, point, these graphs here, if you folded these graphs, they would basically land right on top of each other. So they basically reflect each other, just like you look in a mirror. When you look in a mirror, you see the reflection of yourself. It looks exactly the same, except for it's on the opposite side. Now it says here, multiplying a function by negative one causes the graph to re reflect across the x-axis. So if you look at it, when it says reflect across the x-axis, you have this value across the x-axis, and then if you was to fold it, it will flip down to this uh, graph here. And you can lay them right on top of each other and they will be exactly the same after they're folded. Okay, now we go to the last page, example four. And this graph here has been filled out for you. It says fill in the table and graph by hand. Use decimals where necessary. Now, after you substitute these values in for this exponent of X, you will wind up with these values here. Now, what you are supposed to do is to graph these on this chart here and just graph it. And that's all you have to do with example four. Put in these values, graph the points, and make your graph.
Now we go down here to example five. It says which of the graphs could be of the function g of x is equal to negative three-fifths four to the x. Okay, first of all, when we look at these graphs, we notice here this is in the form of y is equal to a b to the x. Now one thing we learned about a, when we made a negative, we noticed that it went on the bottom side of the x-axis. So we know that will cancel out a and d. a and d has a at a positive value. So we don't even need to explore a and d because a is positive. The only two we need to explore is b and c. Now we can do this various ways. We can take a look and see um, which direction this graph is going. We could take this value here. We have b is greater than one. And then down here, if you look here at our base, and we also need to remember that b is our slope. Now, when we come down here to c, if we look at our slope, which basically determines this line here, we notice that our b values would be between zero and one. So now, this b value is greater than positive one, which is a slope. This b value is between zero and one. So we know that our b value is positive four, so we know this will be increasing. So that means that b would be our answer. Now here, if you notice, this value here. Now remember, when b is greater than one, we can scroll back up here and take a look at the definition. So here we have where b is greater than one. Now, when b is greater than one, the graph is increasing. The x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. The domain is negative infinity to infinity and the range is zero to infinity. Now remember, since we're multiplying by a negative a, one of these rules actually has to change, which is the range. The range would not go from zero to infinity. It would actually go from negative infinity to zero. And also it says, when the base zero is less than b, which is less than one. And if you notice here, we have the x-axis, the domain is negative infinity to infinity, but the range also goes in the opposite direction. So this also, the range also goes here from negative infinity to also zero. So in order for us to figure out which one to pick, we can use our calculator. If we put these values in our calculator, our calculator will clearly show that B here is the final answer.